Hello, and welcome back to Diecast Graveyard. My name is Paul. Today we're going to restore a Hot Wheels 1936 Ford Coupe. This one's in uh, pretty rough shape. It's got a lot of uh, chips in there and there's some toning to it. The wheels are definitely worn out and the body, excuse me, the base is pretty well tarnished. So it needs an overhaul. Let's get started. We got the car apart. First thing we need to do is strip the paint off the body. So we're going to put it in our citrus strip. You can get this at Walmart. It's about $11 a bottle like that. But you can use this many times before you have to uh, replenish it. And as you can see, the bowl's pretty well empty. So we definitely need to uh, add a little more to get the paint off this car. And the citrus strip, strip works really good. Now we'll let that sit for a bit. About a half an hour later, you can see that the paint comes right off. Now notice those black spots in there. That's some uh, pretty wild toning. But we'll, uh, we'll do some sanding. Well, I don't really like the sand, but we'll do some, uh, some steel wool maybe some scotch bright pads and we'll do our best to get that toning off there alright first thing we need to do is using the scotch bright pad do our best to get that toning off there just rub it back and forth be careful not to go too much in there because you're liable to take the zinc plating right off the car now there are different colors for different abrasive levels for the scotch bright pad. And as you can see, it's working. That's working real good. I'll use this scotch bright pad and then I'll come back in with some steel wool and I'll smooth that out. Then I'll come back in and we'll uh, we'll start to buff the car. And eh, just a little bit more maybe. All right, we got those stains off there. There's a little bit on the sides of the car, so we'll use the scotch bright pad a little bit more then we'll get into the buffing I'm using this mother's aluminum polish it happens to work good on these small die cast cars make sure you've got a really firm grip on your buffer because it will uh, wheel will escape from you and it's liable to scratch your car so you gotta be real careful here Look how nice and shiny that's turning out. And make sure you change out your buffing wheel often. I got these ones here at Harbor Freight and they're extremely inexpensive. You get like five or six for a pack for like two dollars or three dollars or something like that. So when it starts to get all really nasty and black then it's about time to change them out and put a new one in there. This one's about due for a change out. It's looking really nice. After the buffing, we went ahead and degreased it, wiped it down and cleaned it off. Now we're going to paint. Real nice light coat over the car, just a mist. And let that set up. Always rotate your vehicle while you're painting it because you don't want to get it too wet. The first few coats on the car are very, very light. very nice let's let that set for a moment a little later all right we've let that set up now we're gonna go back in and give it some more coats again the first few coats should be fairly light but keep rotating your paint while you're at it subscribe to the channel 
and don't forget to hit that little bell to be alerted to any future videos. Keep rotating the car as you paint. Now again, as I've said in many of my other videos, whichever brand of paint you're using, if you're using paint from the Redline shop, if you're using the Nitro Flame paint from BrightVisionWheels.com, always follow the manufacturer's specifications on the paint as far as mixing instructions. If it tells you to mix it 4 to 1, or 1 to 1 ratio with reducer and then add your hardener, this is the, the key here folks to getting yourself a really really nice paint job follow the directions explicitly and make sure that your car surface is clean and you will have a perfect paint job I promise you that's looking really really nice now we're gonna let that set overnight cover up my paint booth the very next morning all right, we've let it sit overnight. Now we're gonna paint the vinyl roof on the top here. Just a very, very light coat. And make sure when you're spraying this, you're spraying, you're spraying straight at it. You don't wanna spray at an angle because you don't wanna force that paint underneath the tape. After a small coat, a mist coat a couple times here, then that will seal the edge of the paint. Then you can put a little bit more in there. But you don't need too much of this paint. You're only doing a vinyl top. Let that set for a moment and you'll peel it off. Now the base is really well tarnished. So here I've got a mixture of Lime Away and water. A 50-50% mixture here and then I didn't put enough in there and I'm not going to add any more so I'll just uh, tilt the bowl at a little bit of an angle to cover it up because I forgot about that real tall grill that it has in the front. but the stuff is starting to work almost immediately. A few minutes have gone by. Look how that thing is bubbling up. It's just eating away at that oxidation on there. Now you don't want to let this stuff sit in there, the body, I mean, the, the base. You don't want to let it sit in there for more than four minutes. Anything longer than four minutes, it's going to start to turn the base black, and you really don't want that because it's really hard to buff all that stuff out and get your original shine back. You may have to let it go a little more than four minutes, but you're going to have to keep a real close eye on it. But look how much that's bubbling. I keep blowing out a little bit so you can see all the bubbles eating away at the tarnish on there. The mixture works extremely well. Just make sure you put enough of the mixture in the bowl in order for it to work. To cover it completely, not like I did here and uh, didn't put enough. That's why I had to put the, the bowl at an angle in order to cover everything. Hey, we make mistakes too. I would love to encourage you folks to start, start doing this on your own. This is a lot of fun and it's really easy to do. The worst that can happen here guys is that you make a mistake and you do it over. We learn by our mistakes. It's no problem. That's why we do these videos so we can give you guys tips and hints on how to do these things you can do this and it's so much fun and so gratifying when you do this yourself and make it look cool now it's time to put the wheels on the base is all nice and clean we got two large wheels in the back and two small wheels in the front now I'm gonna use my tool here from the red line shop and we're gonna go ahead and support that pin in the back and that uh, bushing or bearing and we're gonna squeeze it on with our thumb lightly put on the wheel
support it with the tool and press it with your thumb. Same thing here, support it with the tool, press it with your thumb. Nice. Redlineshop.com. They've got all kinds of things that are to help you restore your Redline Hot Wheels. They've got wheels, they've got paint, they've got aftermarket, well, they've got parts. They've got like hoods and, and glass and all kinds of things. Now I'm taking a Sharpie paint pen in red and we're doing the tail lights in the back. Those things are completely covered. It's just the reflection from the light there. And this is what we started with. A 50-year-old Hot Wheels, well played with, well enjoyed. Chips of paint missing. Wheels are bent up, worn out. The car is all tarnished. And uh, it's really, really tired. Well, here's your chance to restore it and make it look brand new. And this is what we got to. The beautifully restored Hot Wheels 1936 Ford Coupe with the rumble seat in the back. Um, the purple paint went down fantastic. And it's got a beautiful high gloss shine. We put the vinyl roof on the top. We polished up the base. We got brand new wheels on there. And this car, as I've said in the past for other cars, what a beautiful, beautiful display piece for your collection. Folks, follow our videos and do this yourself. It's to encourage you to do this. I followed my uh, heroes in this uh, diecast restoration videos and uh, they encouraged me to do this and I did and I absolutely love it. Now it's my turn to encourage you. Don't just watch my videos. There's plenty of guys out there. I've got an artist list on the homepage for Diecast Graveyard. Follow those guys too. They do great work. Thanks again for coming to Diecast Graveyard. We've got a build off with a 56 fleet side pickup here coming up the end of next week. And it's going to be a lot of fun. Thanks again for coming to Diecast Graveyard. My name is Paul. Have a great day.